Welcome to the Sports Spectrum Podcast, where faith and sports collide. Here's your host, Jason Romano. Welcome to the podcast, everyone. My name is Jason Romano, and this is Sports Spectrum. We thank you for subscribing on your Android and Apple device on iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher. Wherever you're listening to this podcast, we thank you for tuning in and checking us out. And of course, all of our content can be found at sportsspectrum.com, where we have a daily devotional each morning at 6 a.m. on sportsspectrum.com that you can spend two or three minutes to get your day started right and to get your day started properly in the Lord. You can also go to our YouTube page and subscribe there. Just search Sports Spectrum. And on YouTube, you can see all of our podcasts, but you can also see a ton of content, including our recently aired Football Sunday which aired on Super Bowl Sunday and some really great testimonials from players that played in the Super Bowl as well as uh, players around the NFL. So really great stuff there. Go to Sports Spectrum's YouTube page and you can find all of our content, especially all of our video content, as well as the podcast right there. Today's guest, they are Tyler and Allie Beattie. Now, Tyler Beattie is a pitcher in the San Francisco Giants organization, a first-round pick by the Giants back in 2014, first round, and he came out of Vanderbilt where he was a member of the College World Series champion Vanderbilt team that won it in 2014. He was a finalist for the Golden Spikes Award and Dick Hauser Trophy for his season in 2013 where he went 14-1 and with a 2-3-2 ERA and 103 strikeouts. And after his junior year in 2014, He was taken number one first round by the San Francisco Giants, and he began his career in uh, the minor leagues, spent the last couple years there, and he's expected now in 2018 to make the major league club and to be a significant contributor for the Giants in the major league level. Now, he was also placed on their 40-man roster after the 2017 season, which shows you the kind of faith that the Giants have in him, and we're expecting Big things from Tyler in 2018 as a rookie with the San Francisco Giants. And Tyler's wife, Allie, also joins us on the podcast. So it's a combination Tyler and Allie BD podcast. And Allie is an actress. She's in Hollywood doing her thing and has been in many sort of movies and different um, different uh, projects, including some Disney Channel work and just some good stuff that Allie's been a part of too. And both Tyler and Allie obviously married. And the interesting thing about this interview was we taped this back at the end of November, literally two days after they had gotten married. Now, why were we able to get them two days after they got married? Well, it's because they chose not to go on some tropical island and be somewhere for their honeymoon that was nice and sunny and warm and, you know, sitting by a beach. No, they chose to come to a conference in San Antonio, Texas, that was a Christian conference that gathered other professional baseball players and their wives and girlfriends coming together to fellowship, to pray, to worship, and to listen to some amazing teaching from some of the best pastors around. And it was really neat for me to be at this conference and catch up with Tyler and Allie and kind of hear their journey, hear their story. They're so young. They're just 23 and 24 and just talking to them about where they are in life at this stage and where they're going. Tyler, obviously starting out his major league career, Allie, her budding acting career and and can only go up from here. And it was interesting to talk to them about navigating the world of sort of fame and baseball and acting and Hollywood and what that looks like. And it's also been a real treat for me personally to get to know them. I've uh, been knowing them now for a couple years and just watching them kind of grow in the Lord and hearing uh, some of the great stories, I think, which you'll hear on this podcast about how they've been able to kind of grow in their faith together. So without further ado, let's get right to it. Tyler Beatty, San Francisco Giants pitcher and his wife, Allie are our guests here on the Sports Spectrum Podcast. We're taping this in late November, literally days after you two just got married. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Tell us about the day, you know, what the what the wedding was like, and then we'll talk about why you're here in San Antonio and not in some tropical island yeah. somewhere. <laughs> so tell us how the wedding went. The wedding was incredible. Uh, you know, the the process leading up to it was all Allie's doing. You know, she oh, yes. she planned the whole thing. Didn't have a wedding planner involved, uh, so there was obviously some stress involved. But th- when the day came, Sunday came, 
everything was perfect. You know, from the time we woke up and had kind of all the grooms them together, she had all the bridesmaids together. She can speak from that perspective, but surprisingly very smooth. Leading up to it, there was several hiccups, but the day of, we prayed about it and everything went very according to schedule, pretty much. But right. it was a special night, and Brian Hommel married us actually. He's wow. our marriage counselor. Yep. And he's here at PAO, so. It's a special day for sure. Well, speaking of PAO, that's the conference that we're at right now in San Antonio taping this interview, yeah. Pro Athletes Outreach. You're here. You literally got married two days ago as we're taping <laughs> this podcast. Yeah. Yeah, Why are you here? Ago. Tell me about the importance of being at this conference. It's, it's, it's very important to us. You know, we came three years ago. So I think it was the same time as your first year coming, and uh, we just got so much from it. Uh, we didn't know what to expect that time, but we left on fire. We left so encouraged. Uh, we left motivated and uh, in a better place in, in our relationship and in our, in our lives individually. And so um, we just know how important it is. And when we were kind of scheduling the wedding date, we had already booked this. I mean, every time we leave this, mm -hmm. it, we, we book it immediately. So um, when we were setting the wedding date, we thought, you know, maybe early November. And then we thought we, we saw November 26th and we're like, perfect. You know, it's in San Antonio. We're going to get married in Austin. We'll just drive straight there. We'll just go right there. And uh, obviously the, the most important wedding advice we've, we've gotten from a lot of people, especially her dad and our parents, is keep God first in our relationship and our marriage. And I think this is our uh, best way of, of showing <laughs> yeah. that is being here. We were kind of thinking what's going to benefit us more, you know, lying on a tropical beach for a week or coming here with all these other believers and mentors and speakers and growing in our faith and learning more about how to strengthen our relationship and with other teammates. So we knew this was way more beneficial for us. So we're here. That's pretty awesome. Made now, it why is it important and, and, and so beneficial for you guys to be around a community of believers like at a conference like this? Why is that important? Yeah, we know how important it is to be around fellow believers who are relatable. They have empathy for what we're going through because as baseball players, baseball couples, we can just, we understand each other way more. And in this environment, um, being, you know, athletes or being baseball players, we can we understand what we need to to kind of be rejuvenated, to be um, filled with with the spirit, and it's it's with each other, it's with fellowship with other players and other couples, and um, this is the best time of year to do it. This is the best place to do it is at the increase, and so um, we just prioritize this so much and know how important it is for each other and our relationship, mm -hmm. and uh, we get so much out of it each year that it's um, it's a no brainer when we decide. How about yeah. for you, Allie? Even though we're exhausted coming here, yeah. I know we're going to leave refreshed and rejuvenated. Everyone here just gets it. They get this lifestyle. It's not traditional mm -hmm. at all. It's hard. It really is. So for them to understand and to provide you know, this relationship of just no judgment. You don't have to wear a mask here is what I like and what we talked about the first night. Yeah. So we're all here for one another. We're supportive of one another. There's no competition. We're just here. That's cool. We're talking to Tyler and Allie Beatty here on the Sports Spectrum Podcast. Tyler, <laughs> I want to talk about your journey on the baseball side for a minute. Does it kind of make, first of all, you, you guys chuckle. Is it weird to hear Tyler and Allie Beatty? Like, yeah, it is. I you're like actually married, right? That. She's the only other, she's the only Mrs. Beatty I know in the world. So. There you go. Yeah, That's awesome. great. Well, let's talk about your journey, Tyler, for a little bit in baseball. You were selected in the first round by the San Francisco Giants in 2014. And I watched a video recently of that day as Vanderbilt did a great job of capturing that moment, what was it June 5th, 2014, and being selected. It's such a cool video. I can't recommend it more for people to go and YouTube it, of that moment when they say, Tyler Beatty, San yeah. Francisco Giants. Take us back to that day. Yeah, man. It's uh, So just the whole the three years leading up to that, after being drafted out of high school, it was an, an anticipated moment for myself, my family, my dad especially, just because the decision to go to college was um, – so highly speculated and, um, and publicized that uh, when that day came, it was more of so we celebrated and it was um, an extremely uh, awesome day and a huge blessing, but it was just a huge weight off the shoulders as well uh, from what we were kind of going through for those three previous years. And so I think that kind of uh, expression of emotion from my teammates, from myself and my family was was really just um, exactly what we were all going through. It was just a big celebration. Everybody was kind of jumping up and down and a kind of weight fell off my back, and it was um, a really cool day and really cool celebration of that moment. So you're a Massachusetts boy, yeah. right? And you're in Nashville, right? And now you're drafted to San Francisco. So you're literally taking the cross country <laughs> trek here in your baseball career. Exactly. Yeah, it's been a it's been a tremendous blessing. You know, I've I've been always someone that's traveled. You know, from when I was 12 years old, my dad would, uh, you know, right after school would end during the school year, we would hop on a plane and go to California or Florida. 
or Georgia or whatever it may be, play baseball. You know, we travel. And so I was always someone who enjoyed that, you know, and it's brought me to so many great places. It's introduced me to so many great people and friends that I have still to this day. It's obviously introduced me to Allie along the way, mm-hmm. and um, it's been it's been awesome. And now we live in Texas, and uh, it's been a great journey, and it's led us to some great places. Well, we're going to talk a little bit about how you and Allie met in a minute because <laughs> sure. this all kind of connects, yep. odd, yes. oddly enough. So you get drafted, and then you're playing in the College World Series just a couple weeks later. Yeah. With Vanderbilt, your team was 15 and 15. I mean, that is not a oh, they're a championship team. Look right. out for them. <laughs> and right. somehow you win the College World Series. Take us back to that. Yeah, man. So the year, prior, our sophomore year, we we were like 26 and three in the SEC, best team of all time in SEC baseball, and we didn't make it to the World Series. And then that following year, we we had some more younger guys than normal, and we were just kind of trucking along and finding our identity as a team. And then you know we caught we caught fire towards the end of the year and just went on a roll. You know we had. Uh, some 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 good luck. We had uh, some some guys step up big time, and we got we put ourselves in a position to be in the College World Series and make a run there in, in Omaha, and uh, made it a very special one that took us to the to the very last day possible of uh, playing Virginia in the Game Three. Now, of the World Series. Let's talk about how you and Allie met. So this actually <laughs> takes place because of the World Series happening, right? And the matchup with is it Texas A and M? Is that what it was? Uh, Virginia. Virginia. I'm yeah. sorry. Okay, oh, so yeah. I'm not going to tell the story. You tell it because <laughs> you get drafted in the first round, you win the College World Series, and then you get the girl. Yes. So tell us about getting the girl and how you guys met. Yeah. My dad is a high school baseball coach here in Texas, so he loves baseball. I two older brothers just always grew up around baseball he was watching the college world series one night with my mom and um he noticed your great mechanics dads <laughs> and uh my mom said oh he's really cute too it's a cute <laughs> picture so the next morning at breakfast my mom brought him up number 11 for vanderbilt he's a pitcher she said i needed to google him or find him follow him on twitter whatever us kids did mm-hmm. and um I was not into that idea, and she was persistent. So about four times, she was like, oh, come on, there's no harm to it. So eventually, I Googled number 11, Vanderbilt Baseball, got his name, followed him on Twitter. Thank goodness for social media. Social media relationship, Um, gotta love it. He messaged me right away, and um, we just started talking, and that night, they won the College World Series. So he (laughs) jokes that I'm kind of his good luck charm. But oh, that's true. That's a, rea- that's a reality. Well, weren't you a little, a little busy, like trying to get win the College World Series, and then this girl just direct messages you and said, "Hey, yeah, well, like, what's happening there?" Well, I came back in, so I pitched game two, and we lost. I was kind of down in the dumps. I got back to my phone, and you know, I'm just scrolling through Twitter, seeing what people had to say. And uh, the only positive was that this beautiful blonde followed me on Twitter, and. I was like, man, is this real? Followed her right back, and um, kind of history from there, I guess. We, we, talk, we talk every day ever since then. So thank God for us being in the World Series, for me being able to pitch, then give me the ball in game yeah. two. And, uh, That's thankfully just her, God working there because if, yeah, if he had gone um, – out of high school, yeah. Yeah, out of high school, we never would have met. Yeah. We wouldn't have gone to college. I wouldn't have followed him on Twitter. So – Definitely God working in all these mysterious ways. Big time. <laughs> so what was that first date like? Because you guys are meeting on social. Our you're just talking back. Date, like When you first meet each other. So you know? I was in Los Angeles working. He was in San Francisco um, to meet the team and everyone. And he said, well, why don't you just come up here and meet me? So I go. He didn't tell his family that I was coming. His whole family was there. <laughs> first <laughs> so date and you're meeting the whole family. And I'm like, oh, Holy cow. hello. They don't know who I am. I don't know who they are. Yeah. Um, they're a very sweet, great family. They welcomed me in. Um, we ended up meeting what the team, general manager, everyone. Uh, yeah, like, Larry, how long have yeah. you two been dating? <laughs> we just met. <laughs> Today. <laughs> they put us up on this kiss cam. Our first um, kiss was on the kiss cam the first day we met. Wait a so. minute now. Your first kiss ever was is on, on the, the kiss, kiss cam of the Giants game? Yes. Yeah. Okay, had, that's amazing. They had probably yeah. assumed we had been we had been dating yeah. for a while, so they put us on. Probably there, didn't but, know it was our first day of meeting. Yeah, we uh, <laughs> we have had a uh, a unique relationship, beginning to a relationship. But yeah. uh, I I was like I was in a position where I was like I couldn't let her kind of slide through my fingers. So I was like really aggressive early on. I was like, hey, let's hang out. Like, come and see me. No matter yeah. where I was, and it just happened to be San Francisco, and she happened to be a thirty minute flight away. Mm-hmm. Nice and. Uh, I knew how lucky I was that she kind of came into my life at that moment, so I didn't want to let it kind of 
<laughs> I, I didn't tell my family because I didn't want to jinx it. That's right. what he always I've says. Always, he doesn't want to jinx it. I didn't want to jinx it. That's didn't true. want to jinx it. Well, <laughs> did you know who Allie was before she had followed you? Like, had you seen her on any of the shows? And I know you're an actress, Allie, obviously. He had no idea. No, no idea? No idea. I'm glad he wasn't watching Disney, though. That's true. <laughs> yeah, I had attempted to watch a couple boy. episodes after that, but... Yeah, she has a great sense of humor, and uh, I can see how talented she is with, from just watching a couple of those episodes. There you go. We're talking to Tyler and Allie Beatty here on the Sports Spectrum Podcast, and obviously sports and faith is center of what our ministry is about, our media ministry, and what this podcast is about. So let's talk about your guys' faith. Tyler, let's start with you, that faith journey. Where did it begin for you? Well, um, I didn't grow up necessarily going to church. My Sundays were filled with sports, whether it be football, basketball, or baseball. And so my journey really starts... Uh, when I met her and um, ironically enough you know when she came into my life I was battling with so much so much stuff from college you know those three years weren't, weren't filled with much internal joy or happiness you know there was a lot of exterior things that were going on that people say yeah you should have been really happy and and uh, and full of joy you know being drafted and winning a world series those are all amazing things but I just inside I was in a place where I was just struggling and uh, it was because I was kind of missing my my faith and uh, you know she came into my life and that's about the time when I started to discover baseball was my identity and it needed to change because I was just going on a roller coaster of, uh, of of a wave of you know if I did well I would be in a good mood if I didn't do well I would kind of affect the relationships around me and be affecting myself poorly so um, her dad was a huge mentor in my life right away her family's uh, they're Christians they grew up Christian going to church and um, just their, the way they went about their, their business, the, the way they carried themselves, um, their actions and, and the way that they spoke, um, you know, positivity into my life just kind of allowed me to, to grow in my faith and um, really find my faith through our relationship beginning. So in a lot of ways, our relationship started, you know, my foundation was built on sand. So, you know, where I was coming into our relationship, trying to be this leader, trying to be someone she could kind of, uh, I could be a role model to her. It was kind of the flip side. She was someone that, that was a role model to me that I looked up to, and she was a leader in my faith and bringing me closer to Christ. And so um, a lot of ways I still look up to her because of the way that she carries herself and, and leads by example. So um, was there a moment for you though, like a moment where you said yes to the Lord, or is it was yeah. it more gradual? Yeah, it was here at PAO. Um, so we Three came in. Ago. It came in 2014, wow. okay. and I didn't really know um, what was going to happen or the emotions I would feel, but I just felt so strongly to outwardly express my love and um, my love for Christ, and I did that with, the, with through the baptism that they had here in 2014. And I just felt so compelled to to give my life to Christ and to um, you know from there it was sort of sort of baby steps, you know, you uh, you think right when you kind of give your life to Christ, it's going to be all perfect and all glorious <laughs> and things are going to go your your way, but Not quite. it's uh, it's just like learning how to walk as a baby and I had to kind of uh, walk through that process with Allie and she has been my barriers ever since. So 2014 at PAO is when I sort of started this journey. Wow. So Allie, you grew up in a Christian family and then you meet Tyler and you see his journey. How was that for you? Tell us about your journey and then kind of walking him through his. I did. Yeah, like he said, he was aggressive early on in the relationship. He wanted to become <laughs> boyfriend and girlfriend right away. Yeah. I was a little more hesitant. Um, I had never even had a boyfriend before. Wow. So I okay. had my guard up. I was very cautious. And I told him from the beginning, you know, I am not going to date just to date. You know, it's really just for marriage and I want our relationship to be built on that rock of yeah. Christ. Hmm. So I think he kind of knew what he was getting into from the beginning. And so, I mean, we've had our ups and downs like any other couple, but that has always been our backbone. Yeah. Hmm. Big sure. time. So <laughs> how has that changed for you as you've grown now your couple? And now faith at the center of it. I mean, the fact yeah. that you're here, you know, yeah. talk about that. Yeah, so in our relationship now, just... God being the center of our relationship, we make sure that it's a priority that we pray every night before bed, um, that we make sure that we prioritize our Bible studies. Devotionals every day. We try yeah. to hold each other accountable. Yeah, we just know, um, you know, we, we don't need to rely on each other to, like like these guys are referring to here, it's we, we don't need to have it be a spouse-centered relationship, but a God-centered relationship. And, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm here for her. I support her in her career. She supports me 10 times more in my career and, and what I'm doing. She travels um, almost weekly to come see me where I'm at, to help me travel, to pack. And um, so she's so supportive. And I think that's kind of where we are here for each other, you know, and supporting, being encouraging to each other. But mm -hmm. God is at the center of 
not only our lives individually, but our lives yeah. as, a, as a couple. He's never home. going to fully fulfill me and vice right. versa. Right. So making sure we get our fill from God for sure. That's really good. Now, as you're preparing for marriage, what, is there counseling mm-hmm. or some kind of preparation that you said your dad was really big in yeah. mentoring you, but from a marriage perspective and doing marriage in the way that Christ would want you to do it, yeah. what type of counseling or maybe the piece of advice that sticks out that you guys receive to help you sort of get ready for this journey? Yeah, Brian Hommel has been um, performing marriage counseling for us for the past, what, three months out in Arizona. Okay. So he got injured towards the end of the season, which we were course bummed about yeah. but that was such a blessing in disguise because Brian would meet with us once or twice a week for this marriage counseling wow. and he's been such a big mentor for us what did you learn from him? yeah we, so we met Brian last year at the PAO conference and over the over the course of the premarital counseling and just sitting down with him he's gone through every aspect of our kind of uh, relationship together mm-hmm. um, whether it be from finances to being open and honest the biggest thing is really just um, honesty um, and forgiveness. You know, I think each one of us, we all, we all have our uh, iniquities and shortcomings and we, we all make mistakes and fall short, but being mm-hmm. able to, for her to come to me or for me to come to her with, with any problem or mistake that I've made and for us to be able to extend grace and forgiveness has been the most powerful thing that he's taught us and that we've been able to experience and work through. Uh, because like she said, our, our relationship has had its fair share of ups and downs, mostly from, from my own mistakes. But um, she's been able to extend forgiveness and grace. Uh, That's know, been as, the best advice he's given us. Yeah. Be quick to apologize and yeah. quick to forgive. Yeah, it's pretty good advice. Been I've been married 18 advice. years and it's the same <laughs> yeah. thing. You it's know, you have great. to continuously be quick to, to forgive. It's vital. Exactly. Here. Mm-hmm. Uh, a couple more questions here with Tyler and Allie Beatty here on the Sports Spectrum Podcast. Tyler, you were on the cusp of the majors. Yeah. In 2017, and you get a strain groin, right. an injury comes, and it postpones your debut. Yeah. And, and now we're hoping to see that in 2018, exciting year for you. Right. Lots of expectations there. But as a Christian athlete, how do you deal with the uncertainty that baseball brings? Nothing's promised. We know right. this, just in life, right? Yeah. So in baseball, the ups, the downs, the injuries, everything that comes, you pitched in a little bit of fall ball, you know, just yeah. think, things that you probably weren't expecting. Right. How do you deal with that as a believer, as a Christian athlete? Uh, the, the best thing that I've, the best advice that I've been given is actually from Homel. He just, he, he just helped me to be in the moment more. Um, there's so many things about the past that can control our, our confidence and our hope. Uh, maybe it could be something negative that happened in the past, whether it be the injury or maybe some failures that I've had in the past that can kind of stranglehold what we're kind of doing in the moment and take away our attention. There's things in the future like you're referring to that we just we don't know. I don't know when my debut may be. I don't know if I'll make the team next year or where I'll be. There's so many uncertainties and uncontrollables that for me to just be able to live in the moment and to um, really be thankful for where I'm at, to be thankful for the opportunity I have, that I'm still playing this game, that they put me on the 40-man roster, whatever it may be, um, that I can just do it with, with peace in my heart, knowing that, that Christ controls my future, that he has it in his hands, and that I'm able to just um, go about my business with that peace and, 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 and work hard knowing that it's a, it's a possibility that I can do it at the biggest stage in a platform that I can worship God um, on, that, on that major league mound or minor league mound, wherever it may be. And so, um, you know, I used to be in a position where I – wasn't necessarily at Joe at in a happy place taking them out, but now I am just because of why I play the game and who I play it for. And you're both now connected to this world of sort of fame and sports and Hollywood. Ali, you're an actress. How have you guys or have you guys thought about how you remain grounded in your faith? Because you are in a world that, in a business really, that's moving further and further towards the world and away from God. Mm-hmm. And you guys are sort of in this craziness of life, just getting married. You're an actress. You're a baseball player. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Have you thought about and how important is it for you to understand about keeping Christ and keeping grounded in him? Right. Well, they reiterate this here all the time. These special gifts and abilities that God has given us so we can use this platform as a stage like you just mentioned. Yeah. Mm. So we try to use this platform, whether it's me you know, posting my devotional on social media and getting a good response back from that from people wanting to know more Mm. it's just using this using our light and trying to shed it on others yeah um you know that we're in two tough industries that have um, a lot of rejection and i she Mm -hmm. has it daily more than i have it uh, in my profession but um just when we can remain solid in our faith and know 
what God does say about us and the, and the, the truth that he has written for us in his word. Um, it helps us get through those, those tough times because, mm-hmm. you know, we're human. We're uh, susceptible to kind of listening to what others say about us. And mm-hmm. in her profession, it's constantly um, people, you know, saying something negative about what she's doing or what she needs to improve you just don't upon. Feel good enough ever, really. And so, mm-hmm. you know, it's not only my job to, to help reinforce what God is saying and to, to just be here for her, but um, to just continue to be a leader in that. We need to, to focus on what God says about us and to what, um, you know, what foundation, what Rocky's. Um, really put in our lives and been in our mm-hmm. lives so uh it's it's they're they're tough professions but they're also very rewarding in the platform that they can provide us to impact the, the lives of other people around us ali is it hard to be a christian in hollywood absolutely yeah i turn down scripts all the time really all the time i'll read what they're about and i want nothing to do with that hmm. yeah. <laughs> wow yeah. and what's the response uh, are you crazy this could be the yeah, next thing for I your have career been, there's been yeah. agents and managers who have said we can't represent you then and hmm. I said, okay, I'll find another one who will. Yeah. yeah. So finding someone who believes my morals and my beliefs and is okay with that. Yeah. It's hard, but. It is. And it's got to be, you know, so fulfilling, though, knowing that, hey, this is not my identity. You know, because if yeah. you take those scripts and maybe they're nice jobs and maybe right. they're not terrible or whatever, but you're, yeah. you know that maybe something is not right there. Right. You know, your identity is not found in that. Mm-hmm. Let's, talk, let's, let's close it with this. So this has been really great to get to know you guys. Um, literally been married just a couple of days. And we ask this to our guests on the podcast. Every single guest we've had, for the most part, we ask this question. I'm curious where you guys are right now sure. in your lives. I'll ask each of you the question. Okay. And it's simply this. What has the Lord been teaching you right now? So we'll start with Allie, ladies first. What has God been teaching you during this kind of season of life where you are. What has the Lord been teaching me? Um, Patience, for sure. Like we said, this last season we thought was going to be his major league debut. Mm -hmm. So a lot of excitement towards that and then disappointment at first. So patience, patience in his timing, as cliche as that sounds, but we know that it's all going to happen on his timetable and that everything works for good. Yeah. Tyler? Love that. He's been teaching me so much. Uh, <laughs> Where do you even could be a laundry list of things. But, um, it's a podcast. we got time. We're, 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 no, we're so blessed, we're literally, from the uh, the amount of people that showed up to our wedding and uh, just being able to look around. We, Allie and I were saying the morning after the wedding how amazing the wedding was, not just because of um, you know us, her, and I getting married, but the people that we were around. Um, it, it, you know, God's teaching me not to take those relationships for granted, not to ignore to connect with those people more often, whether it be our own family, whether it be friends closest to us, uh, and to pour into those people. You know, I see my, br- my brother, my father, and, um, you know, they're not quite believers, you know, just yet, but that's where I was too at one point in my life. And it just gives us an opportunity to understand the, um, the impact that we can have on, on the lives closest to us and mm-hmm. with just pouring into them, um, you know, consistently and, uh, and sincerely. And, um, you know, when we can be, you know, transparent with those closest to us, especially one another. Um, there's only so much growth. There's a lot of growth that can come from that. And I think God is really just opening our eyes up to the possibilities of, of what we can do together as a couple and uh, impacting the lives around us. It's awesome. He is Tyler Beatty. She is Allie Beatty. And they're laughing because she's just been Allie Beatty for literally a couple days. <laughs> and they are here joining us on the Sports Spectrum Podcast. We look forward to watching your career, Allie, take off. And we look forward to watching your career, Tyler. And I uh, hope to see you pitching in the major leagues in the San Francisco Giants Thanks, in 2018. Sir. Thank you guys so much. This Thank has been a treat. Thanks, and I appreciate you joining us. Thank you, Jason. Thank I you really so appreciate much, it. Thank you so much, Jason. It was right. fun. What a fun conversation that was. We thank Tyler and Allie for joining us here on the Sports Spectrum Podcast. You can follow them. On Twitter, they're both active there, at Tyler Beatty, T-Y-L-E-R-B-E-E-D-E. And his wife, Allie, is Allie DeBerry, which was her maiden name, A-L-L-I-E-D-E-B-E-R-R-Y. Tyler and Allie Beatty. We thank them so much for being here. And Tyler, look for him to hopefully be doing some great things in 2018 with the San Francisco Giants. Spring training is right around the corner. Pitchers and catchers report in literally a week or two. And so we're excited about the 2018 baseball season. And you can follow Allie as well and all her projects and doings that she's got in her acting career on Twitter. And she's also very active on Instagram as well. You can follow her there. We thank you so much for joining us here. As always, you can follow 
us on Twitter at sports underscore spectrum. We're also on Facebook and Instagram as well. You can follow me at Jason Romano and you can email us and stay in contact with us. Jason at sportspectrum.com is the email. You can reach me directly and tell us what you think of the podcast. If you have any guest ideas or anything going on that you think we should be covering here at Sports Spectrum, please reach out and let us know all about it. You can also leave a review. That would help on iTunes. Go to the iTunes Apple Podcasts and click on Sports Spectrum and click the review section. Leave a review. Let us know what you think of the podcast. We'd love to know your thoughts. And then, of course, share this podcast on your Facebook page, your Instagram page, your Twitter page. Tell people about the podcast. Let them know that you like the podcast. That you, just share it. Let people know all about the podcast. That's how we're going to get the word out and continue to tell these stories of sports and of faith. Thank you so much for joining us here, and we will see you next time right here on the Sports Spectrum Podcast.